Nathan, we are in Red Rocks, Colorado, as you can tell by the Red Rocks. But I gotta tell you, this Ford Escape, I swear it was designed in deepest, darkest Bavaria. It is the most European car I have ever driven that's a Ford. Ladies and gentlemen, sophistication right here in America, only from Europe. Coming up next on the Fast Lane Car. Is Kuga. I think that's how the Europeans say it. Man, your German sucks, Nathan. I mean, it's really awful. My pronunciation is the worst ever. Here's the thing. This particular vehicle, and I'm not pulling any punches here, but I'll be completely honest. Europeans usually can design a nice looking vehicle. And this is the little things that I like. Look at the door panel and the folds right here. That's actually really complicated and not easy to do when you're manufacturing a car. All the lines move upward, which is awesome. I love the wheels. Absolutely love them. All right, Nathan, I have the sticker here and it's, well, it's pretty shocking. Really? Yeah, look at this. Um, just over $34,000 plus $825 destination delivery, which means 35. this car is $35,000. And you do get a lot of stuff, but you don't get like a sunroof, which you would get in the Sportage, for instance, which would go all the way to the back of the car. Yeah, and not only that, but the Sportage is a lot cheaper. But here's the thing. I think that the interior quality of this vehicle is way better than the Sportage. Yeah, so the cars it competes with are the brand new uh, Toyota RAV4, yeah. the Honda CRV, yeah. uh, the Sportage, the Santa Fe. I mean, I can keep going. There's a lot of cars in this category. It's perhaps one of the most competitive categories. And what I think this car brings to the table is not just that European kind of style and panache, but the way it drives. It is the best driver out of all of them, and it's the fastest. All right, let's take it for a drive. We'll let you know right now. All right, 35,000 is a lot of money, Nathan, but you do get things like heated seats. You do get an automatic six speed, which you can shift yourself with this little doodad, which is usable. Uh, you get sync, which is usable. But what you really get is a fun driving experience. I mean, there is no other car in this segment that feels as sporty. And by that, I mean, as connected to the road. You know, I really like the style and the look of the new Escape. It is a complete 180 from the old one. The old one was boxy and very American. Of course, this is much more svelte, uh, modern, stylish, I think handsome, but that's because, of course, I'm European. It's also very small, and I wouldn't say it's too small. I'd say it just fits right. When you compare it to cars like the new Santa Fe, perhaps even the CRV, those are much bigger vehicles, but this, to me, is small and elegant, and I like that. I don't think you need something enormous to make a statement. The only vehicle I might compare to this on the road in terms of response and power and everything else would be like the Volkswagen Tiguan. It, the sophistication is right up there with the Volkswagen, which is one of my favorites. Nathan, yesterday without your uh, mass, mass. <laughs> I took this escape the fastest we've ever gone in this segment from zero to 60, it was about 7.5 seconds, which is fast. And that's because of this EcoBoost engine, which is a turbocharged, direct injected two liter, which puts out 240 horsepower and 270 pound feet of torque. That is damn impressive. But here's the thing, folks, there is an issue. It does have a six speed automatic transmission. But none of that helps when you have turbo lag. And that's what happens with this. You put your foot down, it takes a while to spool up, then it goes. In terms of overall driving ability, this vehicle has it in spades over the competition. As fast as some of the other cars are, because we know that the uh, Kia is really close in speed, this feels more connected to the road, and at the same time, I, I feel like a driver in this. And this is a crossover. You're not supposed to feel like a driver. You're supposed to feel like, well, wimpy and boring. I love the interior, especially sitting here in the front seat. Everything is within reach, excellent eye lines, and quite frankly speaking, the gauges are near perfect and ideal. And I love the steering wheel too. 
here's the thing. This is a small vehicle, but sitting behind myself, and I am, well, when I wear boots, I'm 6'2", but, you know, around 6'1", really. Dude, I'm taller than you, yeah, and I'm 6'2". Yeah, 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 yeah. Look, that's not too bad. That's not bad at all. Thing is, it's kind of narrow, so three people across, man, they better be smaller than me. I agree with Nathan. I like this interior. It's modern, it's cool, it's fresh, it's different. Except there is a fly in the ointment. When I look up here, I see really awkward and kind of ungainly panel gaps. It looks like they haven't quite mastered the idea of putting all these little bits and pieces together in a seamless flowing way like the Japanese do. This needs improvement. Of course, this is the top-of-the-line titanium model, so it has a lot of fun technology, including blind spot monitoring, self-parking, and perhaps my favorite feature... Voila! Look at that! Yeah, it comes with your own Nathan, too. <laughs> what if you only got one leg, Nathan? It would really suck if you just had one leg and were trying to... yeah. Here's the thing, in terms of overall space, not too bad, relatively low roof. That helps with aerodynamics, I know, but then again, well, it doesn't really help when you're loading things. But the load-in height is ideal, especially for me. And, more importantly, the seats fold down and there is lots of space. Yeah, in some cars you kind of sit on top of the road, on top of the car, in others you're way down inside of it and there's no engagement. But here it makes you want to drive, it makes you want to tackle this twisty road and that to me is what makes this car such a winner in the segment. Absolutely. You know, these seats are really comfortable too, you got to admit, they really hold you well. You know what it is, folks? I'm able to point it in the direction I want to go. I know that sounds, oh yeah, typical. No, 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 no. See, with electrically assisted power steering sometimes you don't really know where the wheels are and in this case, I know, and I know if I make this turn right here, it's going to go exactly where I place it. And this is a crossover, it's not supposed to do that. All right, Nathan, on the uh, TFL scale of buy it, lease it, rent it, or forget it, what do you give it? I'm sorry for it, I'm going to have to give this a buy it! I love it! Good car. I'm going to give it a buy to lease, I'm kind of waffling, and that's because $35,000, no sunroof, eh. Mm, yeah, I, I could get that, but look. <laughs> This is the best riding car in class. This is one of the best performing vehicles in its class. This is a very comfortable interior, and I think you get a lot for the money. All right, so we've gone zero to 60. Yeah. We've reviewed it. Yeah. What else is there? Off-road! Yeah, that's right, we're gonna take it off-road. <laughs> yes. So come back for that. As always, this is Roman. And Nathan. See you next time on the Fast Lane Car, and thank you for watching. Thanks. You know what the downside is, Nathan? Uh, these two liter engines, which are becoming ubiquitous, I mean, everybody has them, and yeah. everybody's sticking turbochargers on them to make them smaller, but yet more powerful. Mm -hmm. The fuel economy, it's not great. 20.8 MPG in real world testing. Yeah, that's not, uh, well, frankly, it's not good. No. <laughs>